Good afternoon. Come on in. Thank you for coming in. So I got a message that you were experiencing what you believe to be vertigo, as well as maybe some migraine or just very frequent headaches. Okay. Well, if it's okay with you, I'd like to just take a good look at you, look at your neck, look at your ears, look at your eyes, and as I'm doing that, if you just give me a description of your best understanding of when these episodes seem to be triggered, when you notice them being more problematic than other times. Okay. Let's go ahead and please start with your permission. Do you mind if I touch around in the general areas of your face and your neck? tenderness in this area. Okay. And what if I press on your temple right here? Okay. Just gonna check your lymph systems down your neck. To these areas a little bit. Let me know if this is too much pressure, okay? No. A little bit under your chin here. I'm gonna go around the back of your neck. And again, just tell me if this is too much pressure. certain areas of your neck, down the sides of your spine here, so just let me know if it's too much, if it triggers any kind of dizziness episode, okay? okay. So it does... seem to be on one side more than the other if I just press and hold, say, on your left. Do you get any sensations of vertigo kicking in right here? your head upward as possible. Okay. okay, and about if I move a little more to the front. Okay, anything? kind of light sensitive, any of you noticed that when one of these severe headaches is starting to take over, are you triggered by excessive lights, or does that seem to be making it any worse, or does that not have any impact? Okay. I'm going to try a couple of different lights here real quick. I want to watch your constriction and your dilation. So just go ahead and try to look forward for me. I'm going to cover up your right side here just for a moment. Just going to focus on the left. Okay. Do the same with your right. Okay, I'm going to cover up.
You okay? Any intensity or anything like that? Change? I'm going to look at some of the basics. I'm going to see whether or not you're running a fever, if you have any kind of abnormal temperature. And also test your blood sugar to see whether or not you have a spike or if you're running kind of low. That can also definitely have an influence. And we just had this sterilized, so do you mind opening up your mouth? seem normal, so that's good. And I'm going to need just a little bit of blood from one of your fingertips. And do you mind, or do you prefer one side or another? Okay, thank you. And this won't be terribly difficult. Just sterilize your finger a little bit here with an alcohol pad. Do you have a particular finger? Okay. One that you don't use so much. <laughs> the last time that you had eaten. Okay. That'll take just a minute to calculate the blood sugar and then I'm gonna wrap your finger here real quick until the bleeding stops. Do you have a history or anybody in your immediate family that has a history of diabetes, migraines, epilepsy, seizures, anything in your background that you're aware of? Okay. 102. That's good. That's pretty average, especially if you haven't eaten in quite some time. bit close to you. Is that okay? okay? And again, please let me know if at any time this makes you uncomfortable or if it's causing you distress or discomfort, okay? Okay. Okay. Just gonna look at your eyes a little bit more closely on the constriction. take a look into your ears, okay? Do you ever have a history of ear infections, anything like that? You do? Okay. And do you ever know? 
nervous though when you do something like that. Does it cause more pressure build up in your ears or do you ever feel like the insides of your ears get sore? Hmm. Have you ever treated it with something? Rubbing alcohol? Ooh, that's definitely an adjutant for sure. I could explain some of the swelling that's going on on here. Okay. Well, if I had to take a guess, I would say that you have a pretty severely uh, impacted ear infection. I believe what might be happening is when you're using Q-tips, you're often pushing the earwax further in, and then when you're trying to use something like a topical like rubbing alcohol, that's probably causing more irritation. Um, I mean, that's just my first suspect. I would definitely like to see whether or not we can investigate that a little bit further. It might be something that's fairly easy to treat, but also want to look at some of the other neurological aspects of it in the case that it is something more severe than just impactation, or if you have something like vertigo, your infection's going to agitate it, but it doesn't necessarily fix the problem. Okay. So, with your permission, I'm going to just kind of palpate around the back of your ears here. Much of the ear canal, and that has any kind of impact on something like vertigo, or if you have a crystal in the actual vestibulum tube. It's not something that you're going to be able to feel, but you can a lot of the times trigger that vertigo with pressure sensation. So I'm going to just very firmly palpate the back right behind where your ears are into your hairline. Okay. And this may very well be uncomfortable, so I'm going to start on your left side here and just work my way down. been sitting still for just a little while here, so your fluid in your ears is probably pretty evened out right now. That's really tender right there. Yeah, it does feel like it's a little bit elevated in temperature. And that can often be a sign of infection, but it can also be just a sign of general swelling and irritation. something that you feel, not necessarily see. Mm-hmm, you do. Okay. I'm going to take a listen to the fluid moving in your neck. It's not a breathing exercise, but I'm just going to listen for any abnormal buffing noise or anything like that. Because you do have your pulse that goes through. Listen on one side and keep my other hand on your other side here. So, you'll have pressure coming in from two sides here. Mm hmm. Just breathe normal. You're okay. Is this uncomfortable? Okay. I'm sorry. It won't be that much longer, I promise. Same thing on this side. Okay. 
listen to your windpipe here. It almost does sound uneven, and if you are having a restriction on one side, then you'll probably notice when you're sleeping on one side in particular, and you get up. You do? Is it this side? I bet. Okay. Real quick exercise with the eyeballs. Another way to test for vertigo, especially in the traditional sense, is your eye movements. I want you to look at this pen here. I'm going to add a little bit more stimuli to it by adding a light. So I want you to focus on this finger here. And I'm going to move in the light here. And when I tell you to, look away from the finger and look at the pen, okay? Look at the pen. Finger. Pen. Dizzy. Okay. Different side. Look at the finger. You can see the pen come in from the side. Look at the pen. Okay. okay, now just look at the light. Forget about the finger. I can see the eyes when they go to the corner. You can see that there's the jolting that's happening. I can see whether or not it's vertical. I'll follow the pen. Any unusual discomfort with this exercise? Aside from it being really bright. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll allow you just a couple of moments there to relax your eyes a little bit. But while I'm doing that, I am going to pull up on your eyelids. I want to see if there's any kind of um, blood streaking, anything like that that's going on in the back of the eyes, as well as any kind of irritation with the blood vessels, so go ahead. So I'm just lifting gently on the eyelids here. Oh, they look pretty good. And, um, For a couple seconds, I'm going to focus on some of the frontal regions where you have a lot of fewer facial lymph, system, lymph systems and just make sure that there's nothing that is being restricted or if you have a buildup of fluid in one particular area. I'm going to be touching your face in various places. Is that going to be okay? And again, at any moment, if you're uncomfortable, if it causes you any kind of distress, let me know, okay? So we're going to start at the forehead here and just gently palpate over the brow. And under the eye socket. Okay, the temples. Okay, here. I 
looks good. Hey, take relief where you can get it, right? It's one of my favorite parts when I go for a massage. You have some muscles also that go up just behind your ears. I'm just gonna mess up your hair a little bit here. I want to feel and see how tight these are. back around to the front here again and your cheeks your nasal passages cool. is that okay? okay? I'm just gonna move down a little bit more your jaw jaw's rather tight, go ahead and just try to Relax. Back down the neck. Your clavicle. Just gonna move your shirt to the side here. I'm gonna take a good look at your chest. Okay. Okay, thank you. I'm just kind of palpate below the collarbone. Move to the shoulders again. Is everything okay there? Okay, so no abnormal pain or any discomfort. At least that's good. I definitely think one of the bigger concerns is the ears. It does look like they are very agitated. <laughs> the skin on the inside is very dry, it's very flaky. And then with the light, I can definitely see that there is some impaction that's going on right there. So, with your permission, I think that's probably the first place to start. Is to see whether or not we can lessen the pressure going on in your ears, giving a good topical treatment that we can drip in there that itching, that desire to stick a Q-tip in there and if you do have an infection we'll be able to swab it and see just what's going on. So anytime that I'm going to be going on the inside of the ears I'm going to be wearing some gloves. Are you allergic to any kind of materials? Nitrile, well nitrile is synthetic so you shouldn't be but latex, anything like that. And as far as treatments go? Do you know if there's any medications that you might have negative reactions to? Okay. I would normally start with a flush of the ears, but given that it is so compact on the inside, um, I don't think that the water would go anywhere. I don't think that the fluid would be able to penetrate, so I'm going to start with just some very precise tweezers and try to gently Pull as much of that material out as I can. Okay. Do you have a side that you prefer to go first? Okay, that's the most painful one. Alright, let's see if we can get it done. I'm gonna bring out a cloth and that way I can hopefully show you the severity of it afterwards, okay?
you need a break, okay? Alright, we'll give this one a rest just for a second here. And I'm going to get a slide so that we can take a little bit of a sample of that. Make sure that if you do have an infection, we can prescribe the right antibiotic. Is that okay? Okay, so just one last little bit. Move on to the other ear and give this one a break. sample from higher that we can also look at under a microscope and make sure that if it is an infection that we can treat that one separately if needed. Just a couple of moments to settle. I'll do the same on your other side. Okay. 
You ready? nearly as much as you write. So we're going to get just a little bit more on your right. I'm going to make the process easier. Because earwax has a lot of oil in it. Sometimes it helps just to kind of go shift your jaw around. It'll help move the fluid around a little bit. Does it feel better already? Yeah, that's some fantastic stuff. It's good. One of my other really crafty instruments is something that looks like a very small spoon. And I think I'm going to start with your least infected side, or at least right now, and that way hopefully we can get some of the smaller bits out, and then go on to the one after the medication had some time to set in nicely. Okay. And all of these tools have gone through an autoclave system, so everything is as sanitary as they can be. Let's count a different set. Okay. If I stretch this ear up, do you feel any kind of excessive discomfort?
quite a bit easier once it's been broken down a little bit. enough of that torture. I'm going to take an antibiotic and just kind of coat the inside in there so that it will help reduce infection. And then I do think that it would be a very good idea to start you on an antibiotic and oral antibiotic for a couple of days in the case that this is also accompanied by a sinus infection. So keep an eye on it these symptoms don't get better after, say, five or six days, we might switch up to an ENT to take care of this. Um, I'm not entirely certain whether or not this is outright related to your vertigo, but it's definitely something that you don't want to let go of. Okay. So, just going to put one last topical here. So one last thing before we get you on your way. It does seem to be on your right side where the problem is most dominant. So what I'd like to do really quickly, you're nice and safe and secure here on the platform so you're not going to tip over. I know that your brain is definitely going to be telling you otherwise. But I'm going to just position your head and then I want you to tell me if and when the vertigo kicks in. place my hands underneath the base of your neck here. I'm going to support your head so you don't have to worry about that, okay? Just hold on to the sides. Okay. We're going to start by tilting to your left. Just kind of tilt your head onto your shoulder here a bit. And you do feel it there. Okay. But when we go to the other side, is it any worse on this side. Oh, drastically. Okay. Just hang in there for a little bit. Okay. All right, here. Okay. Okay. All right. The one last exercise, and this confirms it. I'd like to do the Epley maneuver. And this is when we strategically position your head in a certain position and we rotate it so that the crystal that's fluctuating in your vestibular system here will have an opportunity to go to the edge of that system and then stay put. And vertigo a lot of the times can just be, well, I don't want to say just because that makes it sound like it's an understatement, but vertigo is often a result of the crystal that is inhibiting the fluid in your vestibular system. So your brain isn't getting the correct information about movement. So we're going to try to reposition that crystal with a technique that is relatively effective. Okay. 
Do you think you'll be comfortable laying down? Okay, just take a moment here. You're not going anywhere. I know it feels like you probably are, though. Okay. And very often, headaches, migraines can be a result of a vertigo. It's very disorienting. So I think if we get these two things under control, we can rule these out as possibilities or possibly even the triggers for those migraines. Correct. Okay. I'll help you get situated in a laying down position and then you'll have an opportunity to just spend the rest of the afternoon allowing your body to remain still, wait for that movement to just kind of subside and when you're ready, you're ready. Get you comfortable again. Now we got you down here. You feeling okay? Yeah, just tilt your head quite sharply. Well, what I'm going to do is with this Epley maneuver, is I'm going to keep your head safely and securely in my hands. I'm going to rotate about 45 degrees. And you're going to feel quite disoriented when this happens because the crystal in your vestibular system is going to be moving. But I got gotcha. you. So you're not going to fall off the bed even though the world might be spinning, okay? Alrighty. Rotate. Hold it right about there. And you're going to get the eye movement. Mm-hmm. Just focus on breathing. Focus on breathing. Okay, you're doing great. And that's settling a bit. I'm going to maneuver you to the other side here, so I'm going to rotate your head. And again, you might feel a little bit disoriented. Less so than before, though. Wonderful. Okay, just gonna hold it here for a couple of seconds. Okay. And now I'm gonna roll you onto your side. And you're going to just lay here for a couple of seconds. And once the dizziness stops, go ahead and sit up. And take all the time that you need. And there's no rush to go anywhere. So if you just want to hang out, make sure that you're safe, comfortable, and stable. like to see you back in a couple of days and definitely reach out to me anytime between now and then. If you are feeling like you're not making any progress, uh, the antibiotics may take a couple of days to have any pretty significant effect on it, uh, especially your ears and hopefully the vertigo will lessen in time. If you have somebody that you trust that can help you with those maneuvers to help reposition if that crystal is still floating around in your ear canal. Mm -hmm. It's a fairly simple technique. You can always repeat the process and you're always welcome to come back in as well if you need to. Once this seems to settle or lessen, I would recommend a couple of different things if you wanted to try something a little bit more holistic, um, not really invasive, but things like um, massage, very particular to vertigo, helping alleviate some of the stress in the neck. That would be something I'd definitely be interested in helping you in. Okay. 
Um, my lovely. Try your best to just try to take it easy. Relax. Try to keep your head still. Focus on your breathing. Okay. You try to take care of yourself and I'll see you. So make observations of what does tend to cause a more severe reaction. All right, and that way we can avoid or incorporate certain things that are helpful. Okay, I'll see you later. Thank you for coming in.